So here's what I want to share with you. First, a, a small story. When you call someone by their name, that's not supposed to be an insult. If you call me Norman, I'm going to say, excuse me? That's my name. That's what you're supposed to call me. Now, of course, this doesn't always work because, you know, in, in, if you're married, then you, I don't know what your wife calls you, but usually she doesn't call you your name, right? So she'll say, Vo, G, or some, some other pronoun, <coughs> or something, you know? But if your wife calls you by your name, Norman, <laughs> I get scared, like, I don't know, something really bad is going to be happening if <laughs> she says my name. You know? Or your mother. Your mother can call you whatever name she wants. She can make up a name for you. Bandaritea. She can do so whatever you, she can, you know, just come here, you monkey, or whatever. But you know what? If she calls you by your name, Norman, I mean, you know what that means? It's something really serious. It's something serious. But generally, for outsiders, for out, not within the family, for outsiders, when they call your name, then that's how they're supposed to call you. It's, there's nothing offensive about that. And of course, when Allah speaks to prophets in the Quran, and not only prophets in the Quran, when he speaks to them, he calls them by their name. Ya Adam, uskun anta wa al jannah. He, he said, Adam, you and your spouse go live in Jannah, settle in Jannah. Simple. Ya Ibrahim, na an ya Ibrahim, qad ru'ya. Ibrahim, you fulfilled the promise. He called him by his name, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya Ibrahim, simple. Ya Musa, innani an Allah. Musa, I am no doubt Allah when he spoke to him on the mountain. Ya Isa, inni mutawafika wa rafi'uka ilayya. Isa, I'm going to be taking you, elevating you towards me. Ya Isa. So he calls people by their name, even Dawood alayhi salam. Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard. Dawood, we have made you someone who will be a khalifa on the earth. You have in the Quran multiple prophets and they are called. And what's the Arabic word for calling someone? Ya. Ya Dawood, Ya Adam, Ya Ibrahim. Right? You ya Isa, you have these cases. Ya Maryam even, you know. And when the angel spoke to her, or Ya Dhal Qarnayn, Imman Tu'adhib wa Imman Tatakhita Fihim Husna, no problem. But you don't have, what you don't have in the Quran is Ya Muhammad. You don't have it, it doesn't exist. And it's not like the Prophet ﷺ is not addressed. As a matter of fact, he is addressed. Ya Ayyuhal Nabi, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul, Ya Ayyuhal Muzammil, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir. Never directly by his name. There is a special status given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Allah does not consider just calling him by his name. He will always call him by a title or a loving name. Unlike any other prophet, with every other prophet, he would call them by their name, alayhi wasalam. But with our messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he'll call him by a special title every time. Every time. And you know what? On the, on the flip side, even the word Muhammad, it's such a beautiful name. Muhammad is what's considered an ism maf'ul. I know that sounds technical, I'll make it simple in a second. It's an ism maf'ul from the taf'il pattern of the Arabic language. What that suggests is someone who is praised over and over again, continually over a long period of time. That is what the name Muhammad itself means. Someone who is praised, someone who is appreciated over a long period of time, continuously and repeatedly. Now. When you call someone Muhammad, therefore, then you're actually honoring them anyway. Just even using that word is honoring someone. This is why so many people in the world, they name their child Muhammad. I know, I know a family have nine sons, all nine sons are named Muhammad, it's very confusing. But you know, <laughs> but the, the love of Rasul is so strong that you know, they just use it. And as a matter of fact, in the Prophet's life itself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some people come, these are, these are new Muslims, these are Bedouins, they haven't been cultured, they haven't been given any tarbiyah yet, they don't know the, the manners of dealing with the Prophet ﷺ. So they come to his apartment, and his apartment used to be very little, very tiny. And they stand right outside, and they say, Ya Muhammad, ukhruj alayna. Muhammad, come out, we gotta talk to you. Now they don't mean any disrespect, they just, you know, like, I, I like to think of them, they're like Texans. You know, they're just rough around the edges. They just do what they do, they, they're, they're not much about the city life, you know. So they just say, Muhammad, come out. They don't say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi. They say, ya Muhammad, Ukhruj Alayna. Ya Muhammad, Ukhruj Alayna. Now, let's take a step back before I finish this story. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala, his best friend, yes or no? His best friend. He never says, My best friend said. When he quotes a hadith, he never says, Qala Siddiqi. 
قال حميمي قال خليل نو قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم his wife never says my husband said she never says that what does she say qalat qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his uncle never says my nephew said he always says qala rasulullah no they don't even say qala muhammad they say qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his nephew will never say qala ammi my uncle said never every time he'll speak he'll say qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam can you understand what that means he has these relationships like you and I have relationships. He's husband to someone, he's uncle to someone, he's nephew to someone, he's father to someone. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha never says, my father said. Even she says, qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in all of these relationships, my, my children don't call me Norman, they call me Abba. My, my dad doesn't call me Norman, he says, oi. <laughs> when you have a relationship, Every relationship, you don't use formality, right? You don't, you're not formal in your everyday relationships. You know, my, my friends don't call me no more. like, hey, hey, yo. That's what they call me. That's my name, hey, yo. You know? So now, it's hard. You have to understand these Sahaba, unlike us, to you and me, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actually a constitution. He's not a person anymore in front of us. He's actually encapsulated in books of the seerah. He's encapsulated in ayat of the Qur'an. He's encapsulated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim and, you know, Tirmidhi ibn Majah. He's cal- it's, these, it's this entire constitution in front of us. He's not just a person, he's an entire legacy. He's so much larger than life to us, alayhi salatu wasalam. But at the time when he was there, he was somebody's uncle, he was somebody's nephew, he was somebody's best friend, he was somebody's husband, he was somebody's neighbor. And yet those people, even though they have known him for 40 years, and for 40 years they didn't call him Rasulullah, or no special terms. No special terms. But once Iman hit them, once La ilaha illallah came in their hearts, then they could not use the words that just come naturally. Like my husband, before she can even think he's my husband, the first thought that comes in her head, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and radiallahu ta'ala anhunna, ummahatul mu'mineen, all of them, is this is Rasulullah. This is Rasulullah. This is impossible for any of us. It is impossible. I am married to my wife and you know, I like to teach Arabic. That's what I like to do. And my wife happens to be someone who likes to learn Arabic. But the last person in the known universe that she will learn Arabic from is me. She can't do it. She's genetically incapable of learning Arabic from me. We've tried. It gives her allergic reactions. She used to be in my class. And she quit after a, little, a short while. And the entire time she was in my class, she was extremely angry with me. And that's because if I'm her teacher, then I'm always right and she's always wrong. Because <laughs> if she answers a question incorrectly, I have my job as a teacher is to correct her and tell her, no, actually, it's this way, this way. Right? And she has to, now I'm in this position where I'm always going to be right. And by the way, in marriage, that don't work. <laughs> Let me tell you. If I, if she, I was actually afraid to, if she raised her hand to answer a question, I used to be like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Just check bookings at the local hotels or something. Because she can't do it. She can't think of me as teacher first and husband second. She's only programmed to think of me as what first? Husband first. And if she thinks of me as husband first, then obviously I'm always wrong. But as a teacher, I'm supposed to be always right. (laughs) You understand? It's very difficult to make that switch. You know? The same thing with your parents. Your parent to your parents, you're going to be an idiot the rest of your life. It doesn't matter if you're the biggest scholar in the world or the biggest, you know, you know, speaker or whatever else you're going to be in just a monkey to your parents. And that's, that's never going to change. They will never see you as a sheikh first, or a speaker first, or a, a doctor first, or an engineer first. They can't. They, the they see the kid that they change diapers of. That's what they see. But these sahaba, these elders, when they see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who they have known their entire life, once iman comes, they no longer see their nephew. They no longer see a husband. They no longer see a friend. They, this, all of that is second. He's Rasulullah first. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why, wa'lamu anna fikum rasulallah. Lau yuti'ukum fi kathirin min al-amri la'alittum. Walakinna Allah habbaba ilaykum al-iman. Look at the ayah. It began with, you have to know Rasulullah. You had better know that in your company is none other than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the same ayah, it's not even a separate ayah. In the same ayah he says, حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِمَانِ زَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ He beautified, he made iman beloved to you. And he beautified it inside of your hearts. In other words, if you have iman in your heart, then you have this unusual, unnatural love and respect for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, it's easy for you to respect the shaykh or the respect this, it's easy for you. Easy, because all you know is YouTube videos. That's all you know is like Facebook. You don't know anything else about our personal lives. But you know what? My family, they know what I'm really like. And that's why they're never impressed. You understand? They know. My close friends, they know. Are they, they're like, yeah, this guy. <laughs> you know? So you know what? And you know, even my own, my, my siblings, my sister comes to my lecture. She tells me why she comes to my lecture. She goes, I, I sometimes I have a hard time sleeping. That's why I come to your lectures. I get some of the best sleep of my life as soon as you say Alhamdulillah it's amazing you know it never fails so you know what the people close to us are the least impressed with us the people far away from us are the most impressed with us in the case of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this will never happen again the, the people that are closest to him are the most impressed with him the people that know his inside out life inside and out are the people who love and honor him more than anybody else sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's incredible it is absolutely incredible to this day anybody in any position of leadership whether they are the president or they are you know the ceo of a company or whatever when they die then people say i used to be i used to be his taxi driver let me tell you he was a really bad guy and they'll write an expose on him they'll reveal his personal life his bad habits you know what he was really like and in our case the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more we learn about his personal life the more amazed we become you're supposed to get the inside scoop to think less of a person and we get the inside scoop and we even think higher of this man sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now this narration that subhanallah subhanallah what an incredible incredible account from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam